Hello, everyone. This is Valeria Pavetsky, and you're listening to Not Alone. I'm coming to you from Cabo. I'm currently on an amazing trip with uh, Nix, but I wanted to take a moment to kind of run away from the group that is doing fun activities. I ran away from them because I felt like I needed to sit down and share with you something that I've been processing and figuring out for the past couple of months. It might come as a surprise to you, but I feel like something I've been struggling with is finding my voice. And I know that it may sound weird because I've been on social media for almost nine years now. And you would think that the amount of exposure and the amount of videos and content that I put out there, I've already come to the place of understanding my voice and what it is that I'm trying to say. And by the way, I, I thought that I had it covered as well. So you can imagine how surprised I felt when I've realized that I have such a long way to go. And something that brought me to that realization was actually the podcast. I knew that when I started recording Not Alone, I knew that this is a tool for me to step into my power, my full capacity power. But in the journey of stepping into it, it's going to teach me a lot of lessons about myself, about the world and how I show up in it. And this is, I would say, the first, one of the first challenges that I've been facing. The podcast have brought so many questions to me about the stories and the lies and the beliefs that I have within me deep, deep down inside that navigate the way I move in the world. And it started on one of the recordings that I had with the guest. To be quite honest with you, I don't even remember who the guest was because it was such a personal moment to myself. The moment where I was sitting and talking with a podcast guest and all of a sudden I found that throughout the conversation, I kept holding myself back. I kept on pulling myself away from expressing an idea, an objection, an opinion, not even a controversial one, just something that it's like my inner voice was saying it, but for some reason, something was blocking me saying it out loud. And it honestly threw me for a loop because obviously when you're having a conversation and it's on your own podcast, you want to have this engaging discussion and engaging exchange. And I just couldn't. So excited to talk about one of my favorite products and the sponsor of today's episode, Element. So if you've been following me on all social media, also talked a lot about it on the podcast, I am loving the product because I truly realize how hydration is not just about drinking water. We need both water and electrolytes because when we sweat, we actually sweat water and sodium and we need to replenish that because otherwise we're getting to a place where we're having headaches, we're getting muscle cramping, we're having fatigue, and that's just not the way I want to lead my life. So for the girlies that don't necessarily want to walk around with those huge jugs of water, but still want to make sure that they're hydrating their body accordingly, enter Element water and electrolytes. The formula has been created by a former research biochemist, Rob Wolf, and Keto Gains founder, Luis Villasenor. And the formula has enough sodium, magnesium, and potassium to make sure that your body is replenished and you are performing at your best. Element also has zero sugar, no artificial colors, and no other hard to pronounce ingredients that none of us need in our products. Also, the variety of flavors is phenomenal. You're guaranteed to find one that you absolutely love, actually more than one. There are some fan favorites like citrus salt, raspberry salt, 
watermelon salt, which is what I'm drinking right now, one of my favorites. And you can also get spicy with a little mango chili or a mix of chocolate salt. I'm telling you, there's a little bit of something for everyone. So lately, my go-to has been the watermelon salt. It's been really easy to incorporate into my routine, but also feels like I'm having a margarita w without the alcohol just all day long. So refreshing. So if you want to give Element a try, they came up with a phenomenal offer for us. All you need to do is go to drinkelement.com slash not alone to get a sample pack with any drink mix purchase. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash not alone to get a free sample pack. I was sitting with that feeling for a while trying to understand what it was. At first, you know, I went to the obvious kind of thought process of, okay, maybe it was a topic that I didn't felt strong enough to express an opinion in. Oh, maybe I didn't feel like the energy exchange was there. Maybe there wasn't space for me to say something. Maybe it wasn't necessary for me to say anything at all because it wasn't, you know, valuable to the conversation. All these things, right? But what I've come to realize that the thing that stopped me was a fear of judgment, criticism that I may encounter, that I may come off as something that I didn't want to be perceived as. It felt so ridiculous to me because I was like, Valeria, you've been doing this for so long. Are you joking me? Like you finally came to a place where you are confident enough to show up on, in this other medium, right? On this platform in the podcast format that you've been wanting for so long. Feeling like I've, hey, I've reached this point. Like I know who I am. I know what I want to say. I know how to navigate these kind of situations. And now we're here, like back to square one or zero. Um, it was very disorienting, I have to say, but it made me realize how still deep down, I am really scared. I am scared of showing up in a vulnerable way. And again, I'm not talking about opinions and thoughts that are like controversial. I'm talking about just the expression of opinions and thoughts about a topic, right? I'm just scared to be vulnerable and open to criticism in that way. Another thing that I've realized that I've been carrying with me is this idea that I grew up with that I need to act and look a certain way in terms of being perfect. And by the way, this is not something that I think was instilled in me from my home. I think that is a combination of what I observed around me, the messaging growing up, but also just the pressure I was putting on myself. This is how you need to look like this is how you need to sound like. And it really came back to bite me in the ass. I'm not going to lie. Miss Perfect is doing more harm than good these days, my friends. Now, let's start with defining what a voice is, finding your voice, right? Because it's a very abstract idea, I feel, but I really want to hone down on what it is so we can all understand what's going on here. There's a few aspects for finding your voice and it can be your authenticity showing up as your full self, your confidence, obviously, and self-expression. And when I started looking at all these three factors, uh, these three aspects, I was thinking to myself, okay, confidence, I, f I feel like I'm I'm good. Like I have a fair amount of confidence to a point where, you know, I'm not cocky, but I, I feel pretty solid in the way I think and I feel. Then I was thinking about authenticity, which I feel like is, thank God, something that comes pretty naturally to me because I don't have, I think, the mental capacity to be anyone else, if that makes sense. So when I do speak it does come from like an authentic place, if that makes sense. So it's not something that I have to work very hard to harness. And I'm very grateful for that. Self-expression. Now that one, 
was very interesting to me because I have learned to express myself in different kind of ways throughout my career. If it's with modeling, it was more, you know, the way I moved, the way I posed, that was my self-expression. Then in social media was the way I present things, the way I tell a story. But on the podcast, it made me realize that I haven't mastered the skill of self-expression in a way where I can be open and real and not hold myself back. A survey this past year has found that 35.8% of adults experience travel fatigue, and I'm absolutely one of those. Sleep is one of our most basic human needs, and it is so essential to our well-being, arguably the most essential. But when you travel and you deal with insomnia and lack of energy, how can you rejuvenate and sleep well, which was the case for me when I recorded this episode in Cabo. I was so exhausted from travel and also not being in my own space. I couldn't wait to get back home to my own bed and my own Cozy Earth sheets. It's time to discover the secret to a better sleep with Cozy Earth's luxurious bedding products. The bedding is crafted with temperature regulating technology and it adapts to your body needs throughout all phases of sleep. Also, their bedding and lounger comes in a neatly packed like a durable tote which is amazing super easy to travel with no matter how far or close you go really easy to pack and on top of that they only use the very best fabrics and materials so the softness and the luxury that you feel really makes you just sink right into a world of comfort so excited that they're giving me an extra special code just for my listeners you can use code Valeria for 35% off at Cozy Earth and enjoy your Cozy Earth adventures, whether you travel with them or stay at home, sink into that comfort. So it's the self-expression that kind of threw me for a loop, if I'm being honest, and made me realize that I am kind of standing in my own way and made me start asking questions. Why am I standing in my own way? What is blocking me? because the opportunities are all in front of me. Like it's, there's so many times throughout the day and in my work where I'm able to come and just do and be the most I can be. And yet I'm not granting myself that freedom. And at first I was, when I started thinking about, okay, what is finding my voice? Is this something that I don't already have? And that's what I guess made me really confused. But what I've realized is that it's not finding something that you are don't have or don't know. It's more about finding or shedding light on more areas of yourself, right? Having this way of being free with your thoughts and opinions and expressions and words and not hold yourself back with those. And it's this letting yourself, you know, the idea of letting yourself be heard. I don't know if you've ever sat with that idea, but that's something that was also a challenge for me. I never thought about it in that way, letting myself be heard. So when I started diving into all these questions, it made me really curious on, okay, how am I navigating that? How am I How am I navigating this and giving myself the space to be more of me? So I started naturally, I started asking people around me. Yesterday we had this beautiful welcome dinner event and in this trip I'm I'm surrounding by some amazing, powerful women and they're older than me. And I asked them yesterday, when was it that you found, like, was it an age? Was it a time? Was it an event? But when when was it that you were like, okay, I have such a clear understanding of who I am and of my voice and what I'm trying to express and what it is that I want my words to to mean or to say, if that makes sense. And it was really interesting, but 
all four of them said that the age of 36 was a turning point for them. And I found it so interesting because what happens at 36? What happens at that age that you starting to give less shits about everything? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I know that as I get older, I'll have less and less pressure that I'm putting on myself, to be honest, uh, but also care less and less about people criticizing me. But I just found it really interesting. Now, I haven't dived into it yet. Uh, but for me, it was fascinating because if I had to think back to an age where I remember my mom, you know how we all remember our mothers at like a specific age and it doesn't matter how much older they get. When you close your eyes, you're like, it's this age for my mom. That age in my head is 36. So there's something to it. There's some common denominator. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on there. I'm 33, so I still have some time to go until I realize. And obviously when I do, I will be sharing it with you. I'm excited. But that was very interesting to me. I am so excited to talk about today's sponsor, Holistic Reading. Now I'm pretty open about the fact that I'm a Virgo and hit most of the Virgo characteristics, like being a perfectionist, uh, often stubborn. Do I overthink a lot? Absolutely. But I have to say, knowing all of this and wanting to know more is actually very helpful for me. I feel like I can navigate through life knowing more information beyond the surface level, you know? So imagine having a new tool that not only helps you understand yourself on a deeper level with astrology, numerology, and human design, but also guides you towards your full potential. Mm, this is my love language. Holistic Reading is a personalized written report based on your unique birth data that dives into your core personality, strength, challenges, opportunities for growth, and energies that influence your future. So if you want to experience self-discovery and personal development and get some more help to navigate relationship, career, improve your well-being, and overall live a more purposeful and fulfilling life, check out Holistic Reading. I've experienced it for myself, and let me tell you, it is truly a game changer. The insights were incredibly spot on, and I'm going to share with you a little paragraph from my report. Your journey is one of both inner exploration and outer expression. Truly. You're drawn to delve deep into life's mysteries to understand the hidden patterns that shape our world. This quest for knowledge is not just for personal education, but to share your insights with others with your natural ability to communicate complex ideas. I mean, this is what I do, you know? The best part, it's not just about getting insights, it's also about taking action. The report provides personalized suggestions to help you turn these insights into results. The best part is that they have given me an exclusive offer for a free superpowers report. This report, based on your unique birth data, unveils three of your most extraordinary innate strengths. So you can go to superpowers.report slash Valeria to sign up for your free superpower report. That's superpowers.report slash Valeria. Enjoy. Now, going back to this idea of, I guess, on what I'm working on now, which is finding my voice, um, you know, when I think, and what are those obstacles and what are those challenges that are in front of me that I need to overcome in order to get there? I think that it's, again, those, those notions that I have in my head, those patterns of behavior that for some reason make me feel like what I have to say is not valuable enough, which is a big fear of mine, by the way, which is ironic because I s speak for a living. but. That was the one of the fears that what I have to say is not valuable enough. Being judged by people or perceived by people in a way that I don't want to be perceived again. So other people's opinions. And I thought I had it covered again, like been showing up online for a long time. I had my fair share of haters and naysayers and, you know, those who try to cancel me. I had those. 
But now that I think back, if I'm being honest with you, I've realized that I've been threading these waters in a really safe way. I've been very much working hard to not say things that are super controversial, to not share opinions that I believe in with the fear of it upsetting people. I've been really working hard to be everything to everyone. And it's interesting because I find that now at this point in my career, I actually think that that's what's holding me back and I need to break that. And I need to find my people. I need to find my village. And I need to be able to feel free to express what I want to express without worrying about how people will feel about it. Now, obviously, you know, common sense and dignity and, you know, within my value system, all the things, but I no longer want to be everything for everyone. And that is a huge realization that I think propelled what I'm going through right now. Another obstacle or a thought that has been holding me back for the longest time is, will anyone care? And I think that I stopped myself from sharing a lot of things because I asked myself, why would anyone care? And I actually think that in social media in general, what stops a lot of people from entering the space is them asking that question. Why would I film this? Why would I share this? Who cares? And obviously people care because I'm here and I build a beautiful career out of it. And I'm now grappling with this idea on the podcast side. So I need to break that. And then the biggest, okay, this is the biggest thing that always been in my way is the fear of the actual execution, right? Me saying the thing, not matching to what I had in mind in my head. And oh my God, I don't know if I've ever shared with you, but I started a podcast four years ago or three years ago, back when we lived in Toronto, before Not Alone, I started a podcast. And that fear is what made me not launch that podcast. And I already recorded like three or four episodes. And I just remember I couldn't sleep at night being like, you know what? The outcome is so far away from what I had in my head. And then obviously all these emotions of like, what are people going to say? And how is it going to look? And this is is this valuable? What is there? What's the point? Why would anyone care? And I shot that down. By the way, the best, I, the best decision I've ever made because I wasn't ready, truly. But I have to say, those are the things that really held me back. And this is just on, you know, I'm focusing on my podcast and my career on social media, but oh my God, can you imagine the amount of opportunities I probably, you probably had throughout your life to make your mark and, you know, make your, and share your voice and opinion and idea. And you shut it down because of all those fears. Those are challenges that I feel like all of us have because no one teaches you at school what it means to find your voice. No one even talks about it really. So we are going through this process at a later time in life. And, you know, you think that you're going through it in your 20s. And then when you're in your 30s, you're like, oh, yeah, I have it figured out. And then you're 30 and you're like, huh, back where we are again in this wonderful place of question marks. But it is a beautiful journey. And that's part of what I enjoy doing, honestly, and why I so deeply embrace the self-discovery journey because it just, it never ends. There's always more and there's always layers to peel off and ideas to throw out of your head and shift the way you think and speak and show up. Now, you know what, while I was saying this, something that came to my head, and I don't know if it's part of like what makes my brain not self-express fully. But while I was saying how, can you imagine all the opportunities that 
we've missed to make our mark, that I've missed to make my mark. My head right away, okay, while I'm saying it, thinks, but there are moments when you don't need to speak. There are moments where you don't need to make your mark. We live in such a egotistical society. Yes, that's a good point. But again, why not express this idea that I just express? You see, this is literally, it's like, I have this story that I want to tell. And then I have a hundred reasons why I shouldn't tell it. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be a long road, but you see, I'm here for it. And now that I've come to realize all the things that needs to be done, I, you know, I go into solution mode. I go into, how do I fix this? How do I move forward? How do I do better? And I've been sitting and thinking, is there any strategies I can share with the audience, right? Where's the value? Where's the value to the audience? Because that's what I think about all the time. And where's the value to me? <laughs> so when I have to really talk about strategies, the only strategy that comes to mind and something that's been part of my journey of navigating all the challenges is self-reflection. Honestly, the idea of looking into what's going on inside and asking questions has led me to realize the deeper issues underneath. And this is one of them, right? Like it started sitting down and not saying a joke or saying a commentary in a conversation. And then me asking like, hey, why didn't I feel comfortable asking or saying it? And then led me to all these other questions that made me realize that I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so to me, that self-reflection is truly the beginning of the roadmap that will appear in front of you. Because once you are, once you self-reflected and you ask the questions, you are able to then start showing up, not in a perfect way, not in a way where like, I know what I need to do next, but just showing up and doing the things that scare you. So for me, you know, making those comments, asking the questions, um, even if I feel like there are, there's no value to it, being part of that conversation and letting my voice be heard, that's me showing up. At detaching from the idea of how it needs to sound like and how it needs to feel like and not how it needs to look like, detaching from that and showing up starts to build that confidence. That confidence is going to get me to a place where I overcome this fear of judgment that I still have. I probably resolved a couple of layers of this fear of judgment through my career, but there's still a couple more levels to go. <laughs> so for me, it all goes back to self-reflection. Self-reflection builds this idea of showing up and hopefully the execution of showing up, which then keeps growing, keep growing your confidence which then makes you care less and less about judgment. And I'm honing down on self-reflection because I want to avoid using the term finding your voice because it's not about finding it. It's about asking why you don't feel comfortable using it. It's asking, why do I don't let my voice speak to its full capacity? and be good enough. It's letting your voice matter more than people's expectations or needs of you, if that makes sense. So it all begins there, the questions. I have to be honest, sometimes when I go on these kind of rants, or in my head, by the way, not with you guys, but when I dive deep into these kind of ideas and thoughts, sometimes I get so lost in my own head. And I wonder, am I just, when I think about it, I was like, am I just evoking more problems and issues in my head and stopping myself from just living peacefully and, you know, blissfully? Because sometimes ignorance is bliss, not sometimes. Most of the time, ignorance is bliss. But I've realized that I, that's how I lead my life. Like that's what brings me joy. I want to go through this journey of this time that I have on earth 
and uncover things that I feel are stopping me from like reaching my full potential because that's what we're here for. I want to know what this mind and body and soul can do and not settle for anything less because I'm not willing to do the work, if that makes sense. So that work for me at this point of my life is really unblocking these ideas. And the work that I currently need to do is to recognize, which I already been doing, but also recognizing and also acting on letting go of all these ideas in my head. You know, it's interesting. I don't know if you noticed, but I haven't done a lot of solo episodes on my podcast. The first season, I'm Not Alone, was heavily scripted. And it was heavily scripted because I was scared. Because I wasn't confident and I wasn't ready to show up as my full self. That's actually a beautiful example of exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I couldn't find my voice. And I didn't know if even if I, with the voice that I had, that it's strong enough and valuable enough and worthy. So it was heavily scripted. And the feedback that I got from my audience was like, hey, we want to hear more from you, not from these perfectly constructed sentences. So, you know, my team has been really pushing for me to do more solos. And I've recorded a few for this new season. I've recorded a few that only maybe one or two of them went live. The other ones did not because I just couldn't break, like I, I didn't have a breakthrough in the conversation. I just felt like I'm, I just got so deep into my own head. So we scratched it completely and I couldn't figure out what's stopping me. And this episode is literally the conclusion of what's stopping me, which is amazing. I'm, I love that we're going through these breakthroughs together because as I speak, I also realize and can bring back so many examples of the times where I didn't show up because I was scared because of that, right? Not understanding or giving space to my voice. Yeah, so on the second season, I leaned so heavily into guests because I wanted to hear other people speak. And I'm so happy that I did that. I'm so happy that I have the opportunity, had and have the opportunity to sit down with some amazing people that I can learn from, from their own you know, expertise, but also from the way they move, the way they speak. If I think back, to a few of the episodes that stick up to me, that stick out to me, that I left with this fire inside of me and that curiosity to understand what's blocking me. It was the episode with Bozma St. John. That woman has fire and such power in the way she speaks and communicates. It made me ask the question of how do I get that? How do I get that skill? Then with Cody Sanchez, who is a rock star, same thing. The way she expresses herself and the way she believes in what she says, I adore that. That made me also ask the question of what makes a woman speak like that? What makes a person speak like that? And then the UFC legend, Ronda Rousey, that authenticity and that unfiltered, opinionated conversation that we have, I loved it. I loved and f I loved the, the fire and I loved the simplicity and I loved her knowing exactly who she is. And that left me extremely inspired to find that version for myself. So, you know, I always talk about how we are the collection of all the people that we meet and the conversations that we have. And my, oh my, if that's not true, <laughs> especially with the podcast. So it's been, it's been such a beautiful tool for me to learn what's missing and what I'm missing seeing in my own kind of world. Because I'm so... 
I'm so involved. I'm so deep into the content creation, the, you know, building businesses and pushing things and forward and, you know, creative direct, but also raise a family and do all the things that you get so cut up. And you have this feeling of like something is missing and I can't point my finger on it. And the fact that I have the opportunity to sit down and speak to people and learn how to listen, because that's what showed me what I'm looking for, if that makes sense. So if you've been seeing on recently in my content, me sharing how I've been so envious and so in awe of people that can communicate better. And that's kind of like my new obsession now, learn how to communicate better, how to bring forward my ideas in the right way. If you've seen some of those videos that I shared, now you'll understand that those were surface level of what it was that I was looking for. Because I thought that I was, was what I was looking for is grammar, being more eloquent, you know, expanding my vocabulary, feeling insecurity about the fact that English is not my first language, like all this kind of topical things. And those are still things that I will and want to learn and improve on, of course. But as I kept sitting with that feeling, I've realized that it's not those things that I'm looking for. That's not the need inside of me. It's not for those things. It's for me finding and being able to hone down and let myself be authentic, confident, and fully express myself without letting all these stories in my head stopping me. I'm done with this rant, but I'm just, I'm so happy that I had the opportunity to sit down and talk about it. I, you know, been kind of going through it on my own and... Just, I found that I've been trying to bring it up in conversations here and there, but there was never the right setting or the right ears for it. And I was like, what am I doing? I have this amazing community of not alone (laughs) to make me feel less alone. So I don't know if this is something that you've been battling with that maybe you didn't realize that's missing for you, uh, or maybe it's not something that you've encountered at all, which is amazing, but... I wanted to share where I'm at and um, give you the opportunity to see the things that I struggle with. So the biggest kind of takeaway from this conversation, is it a conversation from this dialogue, is learning that it's not about finding your voice. It's about giving yourself the permission to use it. And that's where I am now. And I thank you for honestly giving me the space to show up and use it without judgment and without fear. And I hope I'm able to encourage some of you to do the same. This was nice. This was like a therapy session. I appreciate you guys so much. Okay, I'm going back to work now. Um, That's it. I have nothing. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't miss my newest episode right here. And if you're listening to the podcast on Apple or Spotify, please go and leave a review with your biggest takeaway. I love reading your thoughts. And if you have any suggestions for guests or topics, you can leave them in the comment section. And always, always remember, you are not alone.